To occupy Mars is Elon's most imminent desire, and thriving for his dream to be a reality is obviously frustrating. Musk, the overnight billionaire, has been struggling to set a new record about rocket engine development, and even though he created a fast-growing space company, SpaceX, that shouldered a hectic decision of sending the gigantic Starship rocket to the moon, one single component has been a nightmare that the company keeps fighting to overcome for over a decade now. That is, the Raptor engine. Though SpaceX made a groundbreaking process by launching the Starship into space on April 20th, unfortunately, Raptor 2 ended up breaking our hearts even though fans were happy during the explosion. The Raptor engine had become a bone in the ass for SpaceX, but engineers worked to change the narratives. Haven created the Raptor 1 engine, it wasn't completely burning the cryogenic fuel, hence efficiency was reduced, then Raptor 2 was introduced. Raptor 2 was truthfully a blessing for Starship development on the ground, not until we saw it disappoint us hands down in mid-air on April 20th, during the first Starship launch. After the Raptor 2 blew up, engineers had to go back to the drawing board again, and boom, they've now discovered a new method to infuse efficiency and complete reliability on the next Starship engine, the Raptor 3 engine. How will the Raptor 3 engine scale SpaceX to dominate the space industry, and what changes had been made to the Raptor 2 that made it deserve a befitting Raptor 3? Stick around and let's explore it all in today's episode of Tech SpaceX. You will get it all wrong if you think SpaceX made a wrong decision of building another model of the Raptor engine. You can call it the third generation of the Raptor engine, because it makes everything spectacular by increasing the burning speed of the cryogenic propellant. SpaceX hasn't had much luck with this damn thing. If you take a picture of the Raptor engine and study it, you'll be forced to ask yourself, how does SpaceX fix all these together? With the pipes and lines, you won't seem to wrap your head around it. The Raptor engine really works and it's perfect to understand that it takes so much critical thinking, calculations, and decision making to develop a beast called Raptor engine. That's why SpaceX couldn't get it up and running on the first try. It's no doubt the major source of failure to the company's progress of reaching the moon. Hence, the launching of several versions to optimize efficiency. The SpaceX Raptor 3 engine is now the boss of all rocket engine in the space industry, including Blue Origin's favorite engine, the B-4. Reason is during the test firing process of the Raptor 3, the Raptor 3 engine was confirmed to reach around 18% more thrust than a Raptor 2. The Raptor 2 had 25% more thrust than the Raptor 1, and it was 20% lighter. This new innovation is welcome since SpaceX's aim is to reduce unneeded parts and also the weight of the Raptor engines to arrive at higher firing efficiency. SpaceX Raptor 3 is an improved and more powerful rocket engine. It has reached 350 bar of pressure and 269 tons of thrust, and that's quite crazy compared to the engine parameter other SpaceX competitors can boast of. The Raptor engine has about triple the thrust of SpaceX's Merlin 1D engine, which powers the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles. We didn't really have a bad version of the Raptor 2 engines, but they couldn't get SpaceX's desired thrust. They were achieving around 500 to 10,000 pounds of thrust consistently. Though SpaceX was eyeing around 550,000 pounds after tuning the engine parameters. Moreover, it was cost effective since Musk already confirmed that Raptor 2 engine production cost was approximately half that of the Raptor 1 version that SpaceX had been using between 2018 and 2021. Finally, in June 2022, Musk tweeted that 250 tons was achievable, and that was a glory. The downside on the other side amidst all these praises is that the Raptor 2 engines had been produced in hundreds. Remember when Elon said that he aims to produce 100 Raptor 2 engines per week? Though until this moment, no one could give a concrete claim if truly 100 Raptor engines were produced in just one week. But if that be the case, then Elon Musk has shoot himself in the foot by running into loss of money in the process mass Raptor 2 production. Hence, the rest Raptor 2 that has been produced will be condemned. They will likely be upgraded to a newer Raptor 3 version. Well, now will not be the right time to vow that there won't be any other version of the Raptor engine in the future. Since upgrade is part of engineering procedures to increase systems performance, bet we should expect a version of Raptor 5 engine in future. You know, just as funny as that. And again, Raptor 3 simply do more than all the hypes that was formerly showered on the Raptor 2. So, 
It's a golden turnaround through which SpaceX will conquer the sky. However, it doesn't really mean that Elon thinks he is doing something new and too good that Bezos won't find out and others to know about until it is already well into production. Over the years, SpaceX's has been thriving to beat the Matrix and they have adopted to an engineering procedure that exceeds Blue Origins with successful launches and making it to orbit quicker. How were they able to arrive at this in just a short while? And what's behind their engineering tactics? Truth to be told, SpaceX has no superior engineering access or smarter people than their competitors, Blue Origin included. What they do have is a management structure and innovation that encourages risk-taking. Elon Musk came out clean when he said that the penalty for trying something innovative and failing is low, but the penalty for requiring a new solution and not being innovative is high, which usually result in job loss for an individual or loss of a big contract by a company. SpaceX is famous for making huge design changes just at the finished end. For instance, at the first stage of the Starship construction, SpaceX relied on carbon fiber for the design of the Starship body, but can you imagine that just when they ruled out carbon fiber as the design material, they were still recruiting carbon fiber engineers? This tells us that SpaceX is famous for adopting the nimble design approach, which gives you no idea about what the final product will look like. You will just follow the design goals so that you don't waste time meticulously designing a component that won't be required until the final stages of development. This frees up people to focus on practical designs that possess much importance that what should be kept theoretical and the system is evolved over time in a very organic-like process. Finally, Elon Musk loves the KISS principle, which states that keep it simple and stupid. Even when he repeatedly said that the best design is no design, and the best component is no component. By this he means if any part a system has already been designed, especially in the computer-aided version is not an essential requirement for the system to work, then it shouldn't be practically designed to live. This means that the ultimate product is more reliant on good design than sheer complexity and unnecessary hidden details, which can slow down and project kills time, and eat up more money. The SpaceX founder has already iterated the five-step process that he uses to speed up development of rocket engines, which runs like first, breaking down the requirements into steps and simplify them. It goes with one of his favorite terms he uses like make them less dumb. Secondly, attach the responsibility for developing the listed requirements into a single unit and not department. This means that you cannot easily give up on an opportunity when you have arrived at the desired result. The engineer will then consider or question the validity of the requirements in order to act as a second level of design filtering. We all make mistakes at some point, and no specification can be considered unquestionable. Thirdly, delete any ambiguous parts or processes, then reassess the system, and observe what changes might need to be made. Fourth, accelerate the time spent on each design. Fifth, and lastly, automate the process. These design principles are surefire processes used to arrive at powerful raptors with higher thrust. A large amount of cheaply made and simple prototypes that were literally built to be destroyed. But yet again, a critical question needs to be asked. Do you think there will be a time when Musk can build Starship and launch them all into space? Say like space station big enough to house the builders and the Starship that will be landing there, or maybe even a mild version of a warp type engine. If Elon Musk can configure AI up and running right, then he could have robots that will build the starships and then just have workers to go out and inspect the progress of the starship and if that is successful, maybe start building other space stations to house more equipment and maybe even build an operational space station that will be mobile, so that engineers can go out and blow off steam and then go back to starship stations to help get the starships built. Do you ever think a time will come when humans will occupy Mars? Kindly share your valuable thoughts in the comment.